In this last lesson, we're going to look at variable oxidation state salts and how to get the uh, name when given the formula. One of the things that we need to keep in mind is that we are going to require a Roman numeral in any compound that has a transition metal, tin, and lead as the first elements. And the reason why they do, we have to do that is because those elements don't have a set value for their oxidation state or charge. So we have to use a Roman numeral to represent what that is. As an example, if we were to go through and name this formula as we have done so far, it would be simply manganese oxide. Now the problem with this is that if somebody were to look at this, they wouldn't be able to re replicate what the formula is because they don't know what charge the manganese has. So we need to include something else to answer that question as to what is the charge. So we actually need to figure out what is that charge based on what do we know. And we know that oxygen has a negative two charge and that there are two of them in this compound. Since there are two of them, that's gonna make a total of a four negative oxidation state. Now, since the compound is neutral, we know then that the manganese must balance that four negative with a four positive. And because it balances out with that four positive, and there's only one manganese, that means that the compound's formula, the name, contains a four plus ion for the manganese. And our name then would be manganese four oxide. Now the name lets other people know what the oxidation state of the manganese was when you give the name. Now they would be able to write out the formula properly based on the information that you have provided. Let's look at th uh, another example. We've got iron and phosphate. In this case, we don't know what the iron's oxidation state is, but we can figure it out. We know that phosphate has a three negative oxidation state and that there are two of them. That means that the total negative charge in the compound from the phosphate must be six negative. The iron, we don't know what its oxidation state is, but we do know that there are three of them, and the total must balance that negative six, so the total must be a six plus from the iron. And if we just do some simple algebra, we know then that that charge for the iron has to be a two plus because if it's a two plus and there are three of them, that will give us a t our total of six plus. Our name then would simply be iron two phosphate. In the next example, we've got copper and, and nitrogen in our compound. The nitrogen is going to have a three negative oxidation state. There is only one of them. That makes the total negative charge three negative. Our copper, again, we don't know. We're trying to figure that out. We have three of them. We know that it must balance out the three plus, and that means that with three coppers, to have a three plus charge, each copper must have a plus one oxidation state. The name for our compound then is copper one nitride. The next three examples here illustrate why we need to have this because chromium has many different oxidation states that it can have. In the first compound, we've got the chromium and tellurium ions. The chromium, I'm sorry, the tellurium is going to have a two negative oxidation state, and there's only one of them, so it is a negative two total. The chromium then, there is only one of them. It also is going to have a two plus total to balance out the two negative, and since there is only one chromium, it must have the plus two oxidation state. Our name then is chromium two telluride. Now, in the next compound, we've got the chromium and oxalate ions. Now, oxalate has a two negative oxidation state total. There are three of them for a total of a negative six charge from the negative ion. The chromium we don't know its oxidation state, but we do know that we have two of them. It has a total oxidation state of plus six to balance out with the negative six. That means if we have a total of six and we have two chromiums, 
each one must have a plus three oxidation state. So our name then is chromium three oxalate. In the last example, we see that we've got chromium and we've got the carbonate. The carbonate has a negative two. There are three of them with a total of negative six. Our total must be plus six for the chromium. We only have one of them. So our chromium must have, the one chromium atom must have the plus six oxidation state. And our name then would be chromium six carbonate. In each one of these, chromium has a different oxidation state. So if we were to simply say chromium telluride, we wouldn't know. Is it chromium with a two plus? Is it chromium with a three plus? Or is it chromium with a six plus oxidation state? The Roman numeral tells us that information so that somebody else, if they needed to write out the formula, would be able to. Again, when we're doing the nomenclature and naming a compound, if the first element is a transition metal, tin and lead, the exceptions being silver and zinc, this is not done for those, you must have a Roman numeral in the name of the compound to specify what oxidation state it was using.